In this video, we're going to take a look at the complex conjugate. Now, when we say the complex conjugate, this isn't something that is technically a new idea to you. If you kind of recall when you did GCSE maths and A-level maths, or if you're studying A-level maths alongside A-level firm maths, then you should be familiar with rationalizing the denominator when we're working with thirds. And if we had something, say, like this, so let's say we had 1 over um, 3 plus the square root of 2, to rationalize the denominator here, we would times through by, on the numerator and the denominator here, 3 minus the square root of 2. In the numerator, same with the denominator, so we times by 3 minus the square root of 2. And it's the same idea here. What I've done is I've multiplied through by the conjugate of 3 plus root 2. So when we talk about the complex conjugate, let's just take a complex number z. And let's say that that complex number is a plus bi. So the complex conjugate in this case would be z. Now there's two ways of using the notation here. I like to work with this little asterisk here, like this little star. However, some authors um, that you might see for textbooks use a little bar to denote this, okay? But in either case, the complex conjugate here will be a minus bi, okay? So like I said, throughout my videos, and typically on exam papers, you will see this Z with the little star, the asterisk here, and that's a notation I'll use throughout, but don't be surprised if you see this notation as well, okay? So that's the idea of the complex conjugate. So let's just take our complex number Z, and then our complex conjugate Z here with the star, and let's multiply these, so let's see what the product would be. So Z times its complex conjugate, what would we get here? So I'm gonna get A plus BI, so A plus BI, times a minus bi. So remember, we, we had a look in the last video at multiplying complex numbers together. So all we're going to do now is expand this using FOIL. So I'm going to get a times a, so that would give me a squared. We then do a times minus bi, so that would give me minus a bi. We then do bi times a, so that would give me positive a bi. And then finally, we're going to do bi times minus bi. So bi times minus bi, that would give me minus b squared i squared, okay? So all I need to do now is simplify here. So we've got a squared at the front, we'll just leave that as it is for now. We've got minus a b i plus a b i, so they'll cancel. And I'm gonna get left with this minus b squared i squared, so minus b squared i squared. Now we know that i squared, by looking at the powers of i, is equal to minus 1. So in this case, I've got minus b squared times minus 1. So I've got a squared minus b squared times minus 1. So in that case, what I'm going to get here then, when we simplify here, is a squared plus b squared. So it's important to be aware of this property here, OK? So let's take a look now at a couple of example questions together such as these two, and then there's a couple of practice questions for you to have a go at. So we're just working with the complex conjugate here. Hopefully this video should be quite nice and straightforward, nothing um, too crazy in terms of difficulty. So what we've got here is the complex number z, which is equal to 3 plus i. So we're asked to find the value of z multiplied by its complex conjugate. So all we do here is express this as double bracket. So I've got 3 plus i times the complex conjugate. So in this case, if my complex number is z, the complex conjugate will be 3 minus i. So we do 3 minus i here. So we now expand this using FOIL or any method that you're um, familiar with. So 3 times 3 would give me 9. 3 times minus i, that would give me minus 3i. We then do i times 3, so that would give me positive 3i. And then finally i times minus i, that would give me minus i squared. Now in a moment, we'll kind of jump to the fast way of doing these, but let's just expand, um, or we've expanded already, let's just simplify. So we're going to get 9 here. These will cancel, so I'm going to get left with minus i squared. So if i squared is minus 1, then we're going to get minus minus 1, giving me plus 1. So in that case, what I get here is 9 plus 1, giving me 10. But we know for a complex number like z, which is equal to a plus bi, once we expand that, or multiply it with its complex conjugate, then it simplifies to be a squared plus b squared. So in that case, once we expand here, if this is my a and this is my b, then we're just going to do the coefficient of this i, which is 1. We square that and we square the 3 and add them together. So 3 squared plus 
1 squared. Okay, so that'd be 9 plus the 1, giving us the 10 that we got here as well. So you don't have to expand it out like this. You can kind of use this quick, quicker way of doing it, and you will find that usually easier as we're working through more complex problems um, later on in the course. But like you can see, it is important to be aware of how this cancels. Okay, so that was the first example there. For this example here, we've got the complex number z, which is minus 1 minus 4i, and we're asked to find z plus its complex conjugate. So in this case, if this is z, then its complex conjugate would be minus 1 plus 4i. Okay, so all we need to do now is add these two complex numbers together. So z plus its complex conjugate, well, this is going to be equal to minus 1 minus 4i plus minus 1 plus 4i. Okay, so minus 1 plus minus 1. So that's the same as doing minus 1 minus 1. So that would give me minus 2. So we get minus 2 here for the real part. And then we've got minus 4i plus 4i. So in that case, they will just simply cancel out. I'm going to get left with minus 2 there. Okay, so minus 4i plus the 4i here, like we said, that will just give us 0. So I'm just going to get left with minus 1, minus 1, giving me 2. Okay, so hopefully they, they weren't too bad. So now it's your turn to have a go at a couple of practice questions. So like always, pause the video now, have a quick go, and then we'll take a look in a moment at what you should have got. So hopefully you got an okay with um, these two problem questions here. Let's take a look now at what you should have got. So what we've got here is a complex number z, which is 5 minus 2i. And you're asked to find the product of z with its complex conjugate. So two ways of doing this, like we said, you can expand this using double brackets, or you can take a, the a value here, square that, take the b value here, square that, and then add them together. So what I'll do is I'll do it both ways. So if we write this as double brackets here, that'd be 5 minus 2i, so that's z, so times it by its complex conjugate, that would be 5 plus 2i, okay? So in this case, expanding using FOIL here, 5 times 5 would give me 25. I would get 10i here, so 5 times 2i would give me 10i. We'd then do minus 2i times 5, that would be minus 10i. And then finally, we've got minus 2i times positive 2i, so that's going to give me minus 4i squared there. Okay, the 10i and the minus 10i will cancel, so they cancel, so I get left with 25 minus 4i squared. So i squared, we know, is minus 1, so minus 4 lots of minus 1, that would give me plus 4. So what I've got here is 25 plus 4, giving me 29 there, okay? But like we said, the quick way of doing this, if we just split this off here, is to take my a as 5, my b as minus 2. And in this case, when we multiply a complex number such as z with its complex conjugate, then the result is going to be equal to a squared plus b squared. So in that case, it's going to be 5 squared plus minus 2 squared. So in that case, we're going to get 25 plus 4, giving us 29 there. Okay, so like you can see, slightly quicker way of doing it. But like I said, it is important to be aware of how this works. Okay, so hopefully you got 29 for the first problem question. Let's take a look at this one now to finish with. So we've got z equals 2 plus 3i, and we're asked to find z plus its complex conjugate. So if this is z, then the complex conjugate here is going to be equal to 2 minus 3i. Okay, so adding these together then, we're going to get 2 plus 3i. Let me just write the notation down here. So z plus its complex conjugate. That would be 2 plus 3i. And let's use brackets as well, just to keep this clear. Plus 2 minus 3i. Okay. So in this case, 2 plus 2, that would give me 4. And then we've got 3i plus minus 3i here. So in that case, they're going to cancel. Okay. So in that case, we simply get left with 4. So there we have it. So that brings us to the end of this video. In the next video, we're going to take a look at dividing complex numbers.